What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh, well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? <laughs> I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife, and I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago? You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Poor bastard hanged himself not long after. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but it were an awful thing. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry. What did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know. But something went wrong. Afterward, he could barely speak. You couldn't make out a word like... That must have been hard. He lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barrow, dragging timber in with him. You'd hear him hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he'd block the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing were dug up. The landers reclaimed it. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raise livestock, even Lord Panswick. We grow up feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Is your wife home? She's out in fields, lass, pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye, my wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. You haven't seen Mr. Shoulder for some time? I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow? Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm. How odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of our crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Perhaps. But Samuel boarded up that barrow for a reason. You don't want to tempt the same fate, lass. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? Thanks for your time. ta -ra now. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. 
Leonard making bold promises, I see. Don't make me regret this, but yes, you can have a look at it. Thank you. Any road, once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra, set on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really do appreciate it. I probably should have brought my umbrella. Ah, I haven't a clue what that could be referring to. Finally, here it is. Hobbs Barrow. Indeed, a barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Long Barrow. Yes, this shall make a fine entry for my book. What secrets do you conceal, I wonder? That smell, earthy and sweet. Three, two, one. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting! I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck. Thank you, Daddy. Thomasina, a true archaeologist, uses the tools of her trade. Now I'm ready. Treasures here. Treasure. Daddy, I found the treasure. Look. Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. Take good care of it, all right? I will, Daddy. I promise. Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. Good evening, Mr. Crozier. Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. Tis truly a beauty. You're most welcome. How long have you been collecting fossils? Ever since I were a boy. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All manner of creatures to uncover. Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave me today. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the Barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. But what do you collect? Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. 
fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along, then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Good evening, gentlemen. What are you gonna do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming! I am gonna knock his bloody block off! <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off! You heard the man. Charming. Good evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, remember what I said, Miss Bateman? There are stories connected to that place. Yes, yeah, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far, there's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. Goodbye. See you soon. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'll leave you to it. I don't wish to wake him up. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here. Did Mr. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? Now bugger off and leave me to me drink. He seems even more wound up than usual. Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Miss Bateman. How are you? Tired. Gonna buy you a drink? One won't hurt. Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. But worth trying? I don't need any further convincing. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. To Leonard's shoulder. Wherever he may be. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes? Why did Leonard's shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter, his proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sights steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your day sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. 
wasting away day by day. Consumption got her. She would know but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. I used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. She'd get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected at a favourite lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Lookout, we called it. Aye. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him, and I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. And another after that. And another. The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. I treasure the memory. Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I mustn't. Sing the song. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right then. Clasps, celts and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull! Thomasina. What is this? H who are you? I'm the one that saved your father. What do you mean? You were here 25 years ago. My father? You were deep down with the others. You were there and something went wrong. I dragged him out. Impossible. I helped him then and I can help him again. I, I don't understand. Believe my words. You'll find proof in morning. Now go. One more thing. This is not a dream.
Goodness, that was a terrible sleep. What's this? There's a strange stone strapped to the cover. It appears to be a journal, full of hogwash. I don't recognize the handwriting. Maybe Stanley knows more about it. Good morning. How's your head, Miss Bateman? That was quite the tune you treated us to last night. To be honest, Stanley, I felt better. I take it you slid this journal under my door? I beg your pardon? The journal, Stanley. Well, I certainly did no such thing. Nor could have anyone else. You're the only guest staying here. What's the meaning of all this? Do you propose that it manifested itself out of thin air? Well, uh... I'm sorry. I just don't understand how else it could have got there. Are you sure there was no one else here overnight? Without doubt. How very, very peculiar. So... What does it say inside? I'd rather not say, Stanley. Oh? Suit yourself. What do you make of this stone? That's a funny-looking thing. It's got a cockerel on it. Yes, but have you seen anything like it? Never. Do you ever have strange dreams, Stanley? Me? I sleep as sound as a baby. I had one such dream last night. It was so vivid. What were it about? I was at Hobbs Barrow. Oh? But everything was different. Great peaks soared in the distance. And there was a creature. A creature, you say? Yes, a short, robed fellow, eyes as black as pitch. It told me that my father had been there in Hobbs Barrow many years ago, but something went wrong and the creature helped him escape. It said that I would find proof in the morning. Oh, the journal. You've had a premonition, lass. Please, Stanley, I've no time for that nonsense. But I'll admit it's a strange coincidence. Now, what did I tell you about Hobbs Barrow? That I should leave it alone? Aye. Hogwash. Your dream reminds me of a story from my childhood. An old folk tale about Hobbs Barrow. What is this folk tale you mention? Well, when I were a wee boy, there were talk of a goblin. They say he lived inside Hobbs Barrow, hence the name, Hobbs Barrow. Hob, coming from Hob Goblin, of course. Unfortunately, I don't remember anything else about it. I was told not to believe in such fairy tales, Stanley. Don't close your mind to such things, lass. I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you more. Perhaps, if I ever meet him. Goodbye. See you soon. Good morning, Mr. Kemp. Good day, Miss Tompkins. I'm here for his Lordship's paper. Sorry, lass. Mr. Price hasn't dropped them off this morning. I heard he actually left the village yesterday. Indeed. I can vouch for that. Ma'am? Good day. Oh, dear. His Lordship won't be pleased. My sincerest apologies, Miss Tompkins. I'll come back in a few days. Ta-ra. Goodbye. Who is Miss Tompkins? A housemaid. 
in the employ of Panswick Manor. She comes by to pick up his lordship's weekly paper. I'm surprised newspapers are available in Bewley. Aye, his lordship gets what he wants. Lord Panswick likes to keep up with affairs from outside of Bewley. Aye, he has many interests around the country. What sort of interests? His lordship's affairs are his own business. Goodbye. See you soon. Goodness me, I can't budge it. Be careful, Miss Bateman. You'll cut yourself. I spent all morning trying to get that bloody thing out. I shall be having words with that scoundrel next time he shows his face. <sighs> Curses. We have our very own Excalibur. It's all yours if you can pull it out, King Arthur. <laughs> Right, I need to convince Mr. Bryden to let me excavate Hobbs Barrow and find out where this journal came from. Curses! I forgot I had this worm in my pocket. Poor thing is dead now. Rest in peace, Kenneth. Hello, Wally. Go away! You gave the door back to my sister. It wasn't very nice of you to bury her favourite toy, Wally. I gave it to the fair folk! And you stole it back from them! You don't really believe in fairies, do you? You're old enough to know better. They're real! And thanks to you, I'm cursed! There's no such thing as curses either, Wally. Go away! Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman. What a pleasure to see you again. Have you tracked down Mr. Shoulder yet? Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. Indeed. Do you recognize this journal? Hmm, what a tatty old thing. You ought to take better care of your possessions, Miss Bateman. It's not mine. Then whose is it? That's precisely what I'm trying to find out. I'm afraid I can't help you. I haven't seen it before. What brings you to the square today? I'm meeting a couple of young congregation members to go over some scripture. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, Father Roach, but I have quite a busy day ahead of me. We will be at St Edmunds, should you wish to join us later. What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. A rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Aye, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land. Something I wholeheartedly disagree with. To which god his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. Why do you say that? Oh, my apologies. Don't listen to my oafish conjecture. Let us move on. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Thomasina! Good morning, Arthur. You look a bit addled. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. Aye, my head is pounding. To tell you the truth, Arthur, I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers to some sort of excavation. Well, Stanley must be playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. I wonder who left me this journal, then? Mind if I take a closer look? Please, go ahead. The writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Did the sketches mean anything to you? No, not at all. But they turned me stomach. You might want to show this to Mother Mildred. Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? Aye. She might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within Hearn Wood here. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. You're welcome. What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. 
How mysterious. I had a splendid time last night. I, I even remember most of it this time. Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. Thank you too, Arthur. I see the railway station is closed. What happened? The line is down. Track damage between Bewley and Bakewell. No trains for a day or more. Does that mean I'm stranded here? For the time being, Thomasina. Capital. Why do people think Mother Mildred is a witch? Just because a woman lives alone in the woods doesn't mean she flies about on a broomstick. There's more to it than that. They say she lays with demons. Who are they? Oh, you know, local folk. Hogwash. Some also go to her for potions and spells. Spells? Come now, Arthur. Truth be told, she's a nice old lady. I sometimes see her foraging in the brambles around here. Will she burn at the stake sometime soon? You might think us backward in Beulet, Thomasina, but we're not that backward. Sorry, Arthur. I only meant to tease. Goodbye. Tara. Thomasina, dear, come say goodbye to your father. Come on now, don't make him wait. I don't want to. Aren't you going to miss me? I hate you, Daddy. Those are strong words for such a little lady. I want to come with you. We've been through this, little bird. You can't come with me this time. But we'll go to Seabra next month. I promise. Oh, what a dig that shall be. I hate you. Well, I love you. See you soon, little bird. Hmm. <laughs> Please, forgive my intrusion. Are you Mother Mildred? Some call me that. I prefer Mildred Walker, given as that's my name. Apologies. Thomasina Bateman. I think we met at Bewley Station. I take it Panswick's men have cleared off. Good riddance. Those ruffians would cut their own noses off if he asked them to. I recognised you the moment I laid eyes on you at the station. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, it's quite a striking family resemblance. You have your father's eyes, Miss Bateman. You knew my father? Such piercing blue eyes he had. What a handsome young man. William. He was here, in Bewley. Oh, yes. A long time ago, mind. Twenty-five years by my reckoning. But I'll never forget those eyes. Why was my father in Bewley? He were helping Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow. You must be jesting. Do I look like I'm jesting? How did you come to meet my father? One might say I have a reputation in these parts. Folks from all around come to me for help with their ailments. Ernwood is abundant with flora that, if mixed correctly, will cure almost any ill. Your father must have caught wind of this as one day he came to me, asking for a cure. A cure for what? Your mother was with child, and she was suffering the most terrible nausea. Adam. I made something to help her. The journal. This was entered in the journal. It belongs to my father. What journal? Take a look at this. A passage recalls meeting a local wise woman to seek a tincture for his beloved's nausea gravidarum. Aye, that's me. I made the tincture for him. This... this is incredible. You don't recognise your own father's handwriting? It's been so many years since I've seen it. What do you make of this stone? I-A-W. I haven't a clue. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket, or a talisman of some kind. The moors are steeped in folklore. What can you tell me about the excavation? Well, not much. I only met your father twice. The last time he asked me if I knew anything about binding magic. 
Binding magic. He said he needed it for the excavation. Hogwash. My father is a man of logic and reason. Why would he be asking about such nonsense? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think you do. Anyway, I know nothing of magic and told him so. He seemed disappointed. I never saw him again, but I understand the excavation went ahead. Samuel bride and hanged himself not long after. Reason enough for you to stay well clear of that place. You never saw my father again after the excavation? No. I always assumed he just went home. Hmm. Who excavated Hobbs Barrow alongside Samuel Bryden and my father? From memory, it were just the two of them. What do you think my father meant by binding magic? I've no idea. He didn't explain more and I didn't wish to pry. Hmm. This just doesn't sound like my father at all. You'll have to ask him yourself. I'm afraid my father has been incapacitated since I was a child. He cannot speak nor move. Terrible. Oh, I I'm sorry. You said that the flora here could cure almost any ill. Almost, my dear. But your father's affliction sounds beyond my abilities. The landlord of the Plough and Furrow told me about a folk tale associated with Hobbs Barrow. Something about a goblin. Are you familiar with it? No doubt there is such a tale. Name any beastie you can think of and someone round here will have a story about it. My thoughts precisely. Charles Bryden mentioned there was a third man involved in the excavation. Is that so? Well, you'd best ask him about it. He knows more than I do. Can you tell me anything about Leonard's shoulder? I know of him, as is the nature of such a small town. I also know he invited you here. Little escapes you, Miss Walker. So they say. My path rarely crosses with his, let's put it that way. But he's a nice enough fellow. I see. Do you know Lord Panswick? I know his labourers make a mess of these woods, the brutes. The man himself hasn't graced me with his presence. You've never met him? Not since he were a wee lad. A maid brought him to me with a sore stomach. It were all the rich food they were feeding him. Now more. Thank you for your help, Miss Walker. What are those berries you're picking? An ancient breed. No good for eating. However, they do have some medicinal qualities. I see. Miss Bateman? Yes? Remember what I told you when we first met? You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. Why? Something terrible happened to Samuel Bryden in that barrow. Whatever they found down there, I'd wager it got to your father too. Tell me you won't disturb Hobbs Barrow. I can't make that promise, Mildred. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is something unnatural about that place. We must seek to understand the world by rational means, Miss Walker. One cannot abandon reason. Thomasina? Thomasina, come here this instant. I'm playing with Josephine. She can wait. This is very important. Hmm. <laughs> I'll be back soon, Josephine. What is it, Mummy? It's... it's your father. Daddy's home? No, my dear. I must go to Bakewell with haste. Miss Bowes will look after you whilst I'm gone, is that clear? Where's Daddy? He's had... an accident. What happened? He's come off his horse. Silly Daddy. Will he be all right? Of course, of course he will be fine. Your father is as strong as an ox, but I need to go collect him, all right? Can't I come too? No, dear. Miss Bowes will look after you. But I want to come. Go pick up your dolls, then come inside, all right? Yes, Mummy. Josephine, it's time to go inside now. Where did Mummy go? I helped him then, and I can help him again. Arthur, 
You won't believe it. The journal belongs to my father. He was here in Bewley. Arthur? Hello? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to remember something. What is it? I'm not sure. Something in the woods. It will come back to me. You say your father were in Bewley? Yes. Mildred said that he helped Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow 25 years ago. Well, I'll be. Let's talk about it tonight at the plough. Arthur, I must tell you about the dream I had. I was at Hobbs Barrow and there was a creature. It told me it saved my father from something inside and that I would find proof of this in the morning. Sure enough, when I awoke, the journal was in my room. Mildred confirmed the journal belonged to my father. The creature told me it could help my father again. I mean, it was merely a dream. I don't know what to think anymore. Arthur? Arthur, are you listening? Fine then, we'll talk later. I hope you piece together your memories. Hello, dear. Good day. I believe we've met. Miss Thomasina Bateman, the famous antiquarian. My reputation precedes me. I can assure you it does. And you are? James. Are you a painter? You see this beck before you. Look at the water. See how it tumbles and falls. I seek one spot on which my eyes can rest. Be it a stone or a small corner of the current, I meet it with my gaze. And out of the tumbling and falling, a new land rises. I see a new world. You certainly have the eloquence of an artist. What are you painting? A new world. Quite the ambition. Indeed. My ambition knows no bounds. Can I see it? Not yet. It's not finished. And such a world is not complete without you in it. You flatter me, James. Nonsense. Say you'll let me paint you. Why not? Magnificent. You shall be the shining star of my new world. I don't really have the time now, though. Perhaps later? Don't fret, my dear. When the time comes, I shall call on thee. Capital. What do you make of this stone? It looks antique. You might want to keep a hold of it. Do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I'd like to know more about you, Thomasina. What time do you like to rise in the morning? How do you like your tea? What makes you happy? Well, I like to rise early and watch the sunrise. With your husband, I'm sure. No, I'm currently unentangled. Such a view should be shared with at least a lover. Do you deem yourself fit for this position? Indubitably. But do go on. How do you like your tea? Hot, with just a splash of milk. No sugar, of course. No sugar. It rots the teeth. Your smile is as dazzling as the Himalayan snow. Oh, James. And finally, what makes you happy? Spending time with my father. I should like to meet him. Perhaps you will. And you, James? I propose the same queries to you. All in good time. My truths will surround you in good time. Do you know Leonard Shoulder? A man of Bewley? Yes. I care not for the men of Bewley. Only for the visitors. What do you know of Lord Panswick? A fine gentleman. Now that is someone who commands respect. Do you know him personally? No, I, I don't think anyone can really claim that. But what a tiring subject. Shall we discuss something a little more exciting? Goodbye. See you soon, my dear. <laughs>